Good morning, Net Church. My name is Trey. This is everything that you need to know for today, Palm Sunday, in the life of the Net Church. Okay, right off the bat, we have to thank everybody that was involved in last month's Mission Sunday. Now, we set a goal that partnering with three local co-ops, we would collect and sort over 1,500 non-perishable food items. Well, with your help, we exceeded that goal by over 1,000. That's right, we collected over 2,600 non-perishable food items that were sorted and given to the Lawrenceville, Lilburn, and Norcross co-ops. So thank you so much for everyone that donated and helped sort. We really couldn't have done it without your help. And we're excited to announce that for April's Mission Sunday, we're going to be doing two activities that you can participate in three different ways. We're going to be hosting a blood drive as well as community cleanup events all throughout the county. All the details are on the website. We need volunteers for everything, including volunteers at the blood drive itself. So for more information, visit the netchurch.com slash mission Sunday. I am so excited. We are one week away from in-person gathering at all three of our campuses for Sunday morning worship. We have had an incredible season uh, creating new and exciting ways to connect with everybody despite all of the craziness of this last year. But we're going to keep it going. We're going to keep doing this online thing because we do feel like we've got some momentum going, but we really want to get back in the buildings. So visit the netchurch.com, visit our registration page, and check on the Sundays that you want to join us for in person worship at any of our campuses for the traditional service, the modern service, and our Vietnamese service. All of our services, of course, will still be online, but we really want to see you in person, so make sure you register. And of course, speaking of momentum, we are going to keep things going on our social media page and our website. We're always looking for volunteers, for outreach events. We're always having new small groups that are happening every night of the week. We're still going to keep going one more week for our uh, Lent devotionals every morning on our Facebook group, and we just we're going to keep things going because that's what spring is. Spring is all about new life. And so if you want to stay connected with us, please visit our website, go over to the contact page and sign up for our weekly email newsletter. It's the best way to stay up to date. And of course, stay connected with us on our website and on Facebook. Guys, we hope you have a wonderful Sunday morning. We'll see you soon. God bless. Good morning and welcome to the traditional service here at the Bethesda campus of the Net Church. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning, and we can't wait to share with you this service that we have planned for you. This morning, we'll be... Yeah, this feels weird. Yeah. It's been a difficult year for all of us. We're all having to get used to the way things have been for so long. But this, we're excited, is our final service that we're filming because next week for Easter Sunday we're planning on being in the building and we cannot wait to see all of you here. But today we are celebrating Palm Sunday which is the beginning of Holy Week, the day that we celebrate Jesus' arrival to Jerusalem. Our scripture readings today will be on that subject and we will begin with our call to worship, a word from the prophet Zechariah about it as well. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you triumphant and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Let us center ourselves as we come to God in this season of speaking of Jesus as we come on this Palm Sunday, finding ourselves just knowing that God is the good shepherd. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you this morning for helping us to rise up out of our beds and to put on clothes and things to be as well as they are. We ask you, God, to be with us in this time of worship where we can forget about the cares of this world for just a few minutes and just sit in your presence and be with you, knowing and understanding that you are the Good Shepherd, that you are here to meet our needs, you are here to hear our cry, and you are here that we can celebrate our victories. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Join me as we proclaim our faith through the Apostles' Creed, 881 in the hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and he ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting because the sovereign Lord helps me. I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? They will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Palm Sunday is a Sunday of celebration. Jesus' triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. And that is the subject of our first hymn. I invite you to sing along with me at home. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang through pillared court and temple. The lovely anthem rang to Jesus who had blessed them close to his breast. The children sang their praises. The simplest and the best from olive at they followed mid an exultant crowd the victor palm branch waving and chanting clear and loud the lord of earth and heaven rode on in lowly state scorned that little children should on his bidding wait. Hosanna in the highest that ancient song we sing. For Christ is our Redeemer, the Lord of heaven our King. Oh, may we ever pray him with heart and life and voice and in his blissful presence eternally rejoice. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Mark chapter 11 verses 1 through 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever written. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, 
Some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. We have experienced a week of chaos and turmoil. We've seen a new side of our world. We've been pricked, we've been pulled, we've been poked, we've been shook up again. So as we come before the Lord this morning, I ask you to do as the Lord has asked us to do. Cast your cares upon him. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we just come with our hearts wide open. There's so much going on, but it's not anything that you haven't seen before because <laughs> you created this world out of chaos. But you calm things down. But Lord, we want to bring to you all of the hearts that are broken this morning. All of the minds that are disturbed this morning. We bring to you depression. We bring to you anger. We bring to you hate. We lay it all at your feet, God. We bring to you those who are sick and bereaved. God, we bring to you those who are struggling as yet another group is experiencing death because of hate. We ask you, God, to look upon your people. This creation that you made that when you made us, you said, good and very good. But God, we struggle with where is the good today. We know that you have the answer. And you're just waiting on us to turn back to you, turn our hearts back to you. You said, if my people call by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. that you would forgive our sins and heal our land. So God, as we pray for your people today, this human race, we don't look at color. We don't look at ethnicity. We don't look at social economics. We don't look at communities. God, we just look at your human creation and find ourselves humbling ourselves at your feet and casting our cares on you and praying the prayer that you taught, Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Church, as we continue to serve God in our mission, our outreach, we want to say thank you to you for your giving. And there are ways that you can give to the Net Church, and you can find that at thenetchurch.com on our website. We're excited about what God is doing, and we want to say again to you, thank you for your gifts, for your service.
Well, church, today is Palm Sunday. You know, if you're familiar with this historical tradition in church, today is, it's a happy Sunday. It is a church where historically we gather in the sanctuaries or the worship spaces that we have, and then we will do parades trying to remember or remembrance what Jesus did when he walked into Jerusalem uh, the week of Holy Week. We will wave palms, we will shout Ohana, and we will be celebrating this exciting day. Well, we are at the end of COVID, but yet we're still in the midst of this uh, COVID season. So we're not allowed to have palms on the parades. We are not allowed to shout in front of each other Hosanna. We're not allowed to have those moments. So instead of talking what Palm Sunday was about, we're going to be talking today about why Palm Sunday was about. And let's spend this morning talking about really the why of Palm Sunday. Why did Jesus have to walk into Jerusalem or ride a donkey into Jerusalem that week to die for you and for me? And before we do that, let's, let's just go before God in prayer. God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditation of our hearts be pleasing before you. God, may I decrease so you may increase. Amen. Why do we have Holy Week? Why is the importance of this Palm Sunday, of this moment of Jesus coming down into a donkey, walking into Jerusalem? I'm going to answer the question with a passage from the book of John. John chapter 10, verse 11. This is what it says. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. You see, guys, we, we have Palm Sunday. We have Holy Week. We have Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Sunday because Jesus laid down his life for you and for me. We call that actually the good news. That's why the four books where we see this story, we call it the gospel, the good news of Jesus dying for us. And in order to have a good news, we needed to have a good shepherd living and delivering those news. Now, I'll be honest, when, when I read that Bible verse, Jesus is the good shepherd, I automatically think, well, then that means that there are shepherds that are not good, right? And, and John 10, 1, it tells us this. I assure you, Jesus is speaking, that whoever doesn't enter into the sheep pen through the gate, but climbs over the wall, it is a thief and an outlaw. What Jesus is saying is, I am the good shepherd, but there are others that are not good. And he especially is talking about the enemy, our spiritual enemy. We can call it the devil, el diablo, we can call it Satan. The Bible uses a lot of words to describe it. And John 10.10 10 says the following, the thief enters only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And Jesus said, I have come so that you could have life indeed, so that you could have a life at its fullest. You see, guys, we, we cannot have a life at its fullest without Palm Sunday. We cannot have a life at its fullest without Jesus being arrested on Thursday night. We cannot have a life at its fullest without Jesus dying on the cross on Good Friday. We cannot have a life at its fullest without Jesus conquering death and coming back to life on Easter Sunday. Without that, we can have a nice life. We can, we can have an, an okay life. We can even have a, a good life for some standards, but we cannot have a good life. One of the challenges that we see in churches is that when we talk about a good life, a life at its fullest, the implications of Jesus' sacrifice 
of dying for your sins and for my sins, we often see those as, you know, that's an eternal implication. Someday when we go to heaven, we will experience eternal life. But what Jesus is telling us here is that the Good Shepherd came so you and I can experience the implications of Jesus here on earth. So that our daily lives can be impacted by this moment. So if any of you are like a sheep, because that, that's who we are in this analogy, maybe wandering, maybe lost, maybe filthy, maybe without a sense of direction. Let me tell you what this good shepherd wants to do with you and your life. This good shepherd will guide you. And I love how John 10, 3 says these words. The guard at the gate opens the gate for him and the sheep will listen to his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I hope that in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through life, you can hear God's calling your name, wanting to guide you, wanting to give you a life with a purpose. Now, the challenge in this story is that uh, it is not if the good shepherd is speaking or not, it is are the sheep listening? Are the sheep recognizing the voice of the good shepherd? You see, if you were to put 20 ladies in a room and all of a sudden they are talking to one another. If, and if I walk into that room, that, that, that's just a lot of noise, right? And I'm saying this kindly. But the fascinating thing is that they will understand one another. If, if you put 20 guys in a room, eh, nobody can have more than one conversation. We cannot even watch a football game and somebody else talking to us, right? We need to shush them because we cannot comprehend. Ladies have the ability to be in 27 different conversations. But if I walk into that room blindfolded and my wife, Kelly, is in that room and she speaks and all the other 19 ladies is speaking, I'll be able to go exactly where she is. Why? Because I know her voice. Because I recognize her voice. I know her happy voice, I know her sad voice, I know her just sleeping in the couch voice, but I can recognize her voice. And the only way I'm able to do that is because I spend time with her. The Good Shepherd will love to guide you. I want to encourage you to spend time with the Good Shepherd so you can recognize the Good Shepherd's voice. The Good Shepherd will correct you. You see, one of the things that I learned when I was doing some research about sheep is that when one of them wander, and they usually do that, or when one of them are just stubborn in going in their ways, the shepherd will come, will use a little rod, a piece of wood, and will actually break one of their legs, which it kind of sounds like cruel or tough love, but then by consequence, what a good shepherd will do is he'll pick up that sheep into his shoulders and carry it until healing starts placing. placing. And as this sheep is able to start walking, he'll put it next to her. And because she cannot wander because of the leg, she'll just get used to, to walk by him. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, that God is out there trying to break your legs. But what I'm saying is that we have a good shepherd that will love us and that will correct us when we need correction. And the good shepherd will protect you. And I love how John 10, 15b says the following. Jesus said, I give up my life for the sheep. What he's telling us is that attacks will happen. That wolves, thieves, and, and others will come and attack the sheep. Yet, the shepherd will lay his life for the sheep. I love how Psalm 23 even says, even though I walk through the valley of, of darkness, I will fear no evil because I know that you are with me and your rod and your staff is with me. That's what the good shepherd does. 
So if, if any of you right now feel like a sheep, perhaps lost and wandering, and you're even wondering, is God is out there? I hope this, this message may be for you. That maybe if you're in the midst of trying to make big decisions for your life, you will let Jesus direct your life, guide your life. If you're in the middle of, of facing the consequences of bad or stupid choices, that you will let Jesus correct you. And if perhaps you are in the midst of, of attacks from the enemy, that you will let Jesus protect you. You have a good shepherd. And if, if, the, and if there is anybody out there thinking, well, pastor, uh, I think right now I'm in a good place in my life. Well, praise God for that. But let, let me tell you this, you know, be, being a Christian is more than just, you know, waving palms on Palm Sunday. Being a Christian is more than just being a sheep. It is actually stepping up and helping the shepherd care for other sheep. Our biblical mandate, it is to love others so they can experience the love from God. You may be thinking, well, I, I just don't know who is out there in pain. I just don't know who is out there grieving. Well, let me give you an idea of who is out there. Shiakshit Tan, the young Feng, Soon Park, Hyung Young Grant, Son Cha Kim, Young A Yu, Delona Ashley Young. Paul Andre Michaels. I just mentioned the victims of the shooting that happened in our streets here in Atlanta last week because of an attack from a wolf, from evil. We are meant to help the shepherd care for those who are sheep. We're supposed to be his flesh and his hands and his feet here on earth. Church, we have a responsibility and we have been talking about this for the past month to resist evil, oppression and injustice in whatever shape and form they may present themselves. This is our time, church. 2021, it is a Sunday and a year for us to go beyond than just living Palm Sunday, but actually helping people experience the goodness of the shepherd that came to die for them. Guide people and show them God's unconditional love. Correct people and call sin what it is when it comes down to sin define it and protect people step up and lay your life for those who need it church we're about to start holy week and we go to monday all the way to sunday and we're looking forward to celebrate with you next week at the campuses or online but i hope today you can take with you that on this palm sunday it's more than a celebration Sunday. It is actually a moment when God is calling you to make a difference and address the brokenness that we have around us. There is a good shepherd. There is a broken world. There is evil around us. And yet there is you and me that we need to play a role. Don't waste your calling, church. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for a Sunday where you rode a donkey, perhaps like the ones that are behind me, and, and walk into Jerusalem so you could lay your life for us. God, I pray that you will put the same spirit in us that we can lay our lives for the sake of others. God, we give you thanks for the goodness that you bring to our lives. And we pray that you can help us give by grace what by grace we have received. 
We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's service has been about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who is always with us. And with our final hymn, we say, The Lord is my shepherd, I'll not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie in pastures green. He leadeth me the quiet waters by. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. Well, church, Jesus has done his part. He has walked into Jerusalem. He has experienced Holy Week, as we'll remember together. He has conquered death, and we will celebrate it next week. So please register to one of our campuses or watch us online. But church, the, call, the ball is in our court. It is your role, and it is my role, to live a life where others can experience the goodness of God. Let's live a life not only that they can celebrate God, but we can experience God through you and me. Have a blessed, blessed week.